Reassure me, we aren't going to have to force that one, are we? I don't think we're even capable of doing it. You're going to have to find a way to open it. Why, of course. And what's inside? Something to vanquish them with? Perfect. So, how does it open? We'll need several keys. I found a note from the architect who conceived the mechanism in Mortimer's secret study. We have to first gather six objects before we try anything. Are your six objects the keys? Exactly. We have the Clement III cross, the nails, the Gutenberg Bible, the exegesis of Judas, an armillary sphere, and all we need to match up the dates between the different calendars. Some nails? Don't ask me. I'm not the one who made the mechanism, you know. When I arrived, there were already a few of them inserted, so I didn't have to worry about those. On the other hand, I remember seeing some in Mortimer's secret study, behind his nightmare. In a golden cup? Yes. Yes, I saw them too. Perfect. It will be easy for you to find them then. You need three of them. Very well. You remember what to do about the rollers. 1191 to enter and 6466 to exit. Of course. There's one in the portrait gallery. Yes, but it's enormous. If you don't want to have to go back and forth several times, then I suggest you get a smaller one. What did you do then? I didn't think I'd need one. I started without one, and I lost my hand before I did need one. And you can see the result. What do you mean by the concordance of dates, exactly? Don't worry about that. We already have them. They are written on the back of the message I just gave you. There's one in the portrait gallery. That's right. You still believe it's in the tower room, don't you? I don't know. There is only one way to find out, though. Right. I shall go and see. Exegesis. Anything else? Hmm. You... Did you manage to vanquish the Medusa? To open the chimney? Yes, absolutely. So you've already come across it. It's the Bible of Judas that is exposed in the secret room behind the chimney. Why do they call it an exegesis? Because that's what it is, and not an apocryphal Bible, strictly speaking. It's the study of a text with a summary, not an actual Bible. Anyway, well done for the Gorgon. You did well. You didn't get tricked by the light bouncing back. Thanks. Do you think I can take it safely? We haven't got a choice, Louis. Without it, we won't be able to work out this cursed mechanism. Why a cross? Well, I haven't the foggiest idea. But it just so happens that's what you are going to use to activate the mechanism. I found the one Mortimer kept. It belonged to Cardinal Guibert, better known by the name of Pope Clement III. Perfect. Where is it? Unfortunately, I've lost it. When I lost my hand, I went dashing out, and it must have fallen from my pocket. Remember, Mother. I I'm certain you can remember. Let me think. You were running. I was bleeding to death. You remember the pain. I thought I was going to faint. Yes, I remember. I don't think it can be far, can it? Would you have lost it outside? No, I don't think so. It must be in the area. I don't remember going up with it. Perfect. I'll search the crypt before leaving. One last thing before you go. Be very careful. If you come across anyone, they can all potentially be spies of Mortimer or Holm. Don't ever confide in anyone because a demon can slip inside them at any moment. Wait, not all of them though. Take Washington. Especially Washington. He's been conditioned by Mortimer for years. Look at them for crying out loud. How do you explain their behavior otherwise? The most influential politicians in the Western world gather together without the least protection, without a single aid to assist them, to participate in a conference during which the guests start dropping like flies. Me, Adams, Peru, Hillsborough, Look at the number of calamities that have happened over the past few days. And not one of them has asked to leave the island? Do you find that normal? You'll see. Go up to the manor to look for the keys, and I wager not one of them will speak to you about my being in Emily's room. Do you think so? Go on, you'll see. And come back with all the objects in one go. 
Time is against us. And remember, the code to get out of the secret office is 6646. Ah, Dorishe. Nice try with George Washington. You are still a little raw to be able to manipulate an old wolf like him, but what could be expected? So don't blame yourself. <laughs> you think you could have handled it? Certainly. What can I do for you? I'm dreaming. My mother was right. He's not going to tell me one word about what happened to Emily. To tell you the truth, I'm in search of an armillary sphere. You wouldn't know where I can find it, would you? Well, well. So you do have a passion for astronomy. Von Volner has already bored me quite enough with all of his endless stories. You ought to concentrate, Louis. Politics is an art that requires all one's attention. Refrain from spreading yourself too thin and leave stargazing to the poets. <laughs> what can I say? I am only... Ask Volner. I am sure he must have it among his effects. Perfect. Thank you, my Lord Duke. Leave me now. See you later. Not too shocked. I beg your pardon? About Peru this morning. I asked you if you weren't too shocked by it all. I did what I could. He made his choice. Tragic, but there it is. He made his choice, yes, but it puts us in a very sensitive situation. How are we going to win the conference with just the three of us? Tell me. I was wondering. You wouldn't know where to find an armillary sphere, would you? Do you really think this is the right time? Oh, ask Volner. I am sure he will know. What with him being passionate about astronomy, you ought to get on fine together. Leave me now. I need to think of a solution. I won't keep you any longer. See you later, monsieur. Hmm. The Song of Roland. Roland feeleth his death is near, his brain is oozing by, by their ear. With his brain oozing, it's already remarkable that he can feel anything. Christ Crucified by Velasquez. Look, someone's left a note there. Reserved for the Duke of Alquidia. Ah, Louis. Glad you're here. Blasted. He's gonna talk about my mother. Come and see what I've found. There are pieces of paper in the ashes of the chimney. Someone's been burning something here. Incredible. He doesn't seem to want to speak to me about what happened between my mother and the Hillsborough sisters. Show me a little. Look, it's possible to distinguish two different writing styles. Hmm. The rest of the correspondence between my mother and Emma. Someone tried to burn an exchange of messages. I'm certain. There must be more. Shit. What on earth is he doing? If you want my opinion, a, a servant must have burnt some old papers. That's all. Why, of course. You very nearly made me think that you were trying to hide something, Louis. No, I'm sure there must be other hidden messages. He won't let go. He's going to work his way back to the Bible if he continues. Oh, the Bible's still there. chest with the occult symbol representing air. Hey, look, there. Hmm. No, I don't see anything. Come, Louis, look. Someone's clearly drawn a four in the dust. I have a clue. He's going to be disappointed when he sees the Bible's disappeared.
Carmelite water. They say that if you drink this, it gives you a real boost. An armillary sphere. Perfect. That will save me some time. I only hope that he isn't going to realize it right away. He was the English Prime Minister. This letter dates from 15 years ago now. Madam, I shall never thank you enough for all your care and attention. I shall be indebted to you until my last breath. If you have any request of me, you only need ask. With regards to my son, William, I shall never thank you enough for looking after him. You know the latter's preferences, and you will understand he needs you desperately. For that, and as agreed with Queen Charlotte, our friend Duke Hillsborough will carry out his task and meet with you within six months. From then on, you'll be free from want. Yours sincerely, William Pitt, Count of Chatham. My dear Giuseppe, poor health forbids me from joining you. Please thank Sir Gregory for his invitation to Lord Mortimer's. I'm convinced you'll be able to strengthen our agreements. Please tell Sir Gregory that his enterprise concerning our friend Cardinal Bishop Chiaramonti is following its course. I place my trust in you. May God bless you and give you protection. S.S. Giovanni Angelico Braschi This time, it'll be a lot quicker. If I remember rightly, the code was 1191. The map of Europe. Someone's written 26 million in France. It's the estimated population of France. Mortimer knows very well that France has a higher population than its neighbors. He's preparing for it to go to war and knows he can make it happen by stirring up the people. I'm standing in front of a lesson of absolute mastery in military strategy, which is absolutely spine-chilling if it turns out that Mortimer is a demon. Hmm. Troops are directed towards Italy. I get the feeling that Piaggi's going to be in for a hard time. The conference might be focused on the United States, but Mortimer has an eye everywhere, which is not very reassuring if he really is a demon. There! Those are the nails I was looking for. I noticed they were old and rusty, but but I hadn't noticed these traces of... Could that be blood? It, is it really the relic of the Holy Cross? I can hardly believe it. Mortimer's conference is successful. French forces on the North American continent could literally change the balance of competing armies. I don't understand why Washington would let it happen. Weaknesses of the Human Psyche by Gilhelm Trimor. Gilhelm Trimor. Trimor. An anagram of Mortimer. Wow. Arrogant enough to publish writings on mental control in full view of everyone. I wonder who he's writing for. A map of the triangular trade organized by a demon. 
It makes me want to throw up. All right, come on. Let's get out of here. 6466, six, six, if I remember correctly. Right. I've got what I need. Now let's not waste any more time. So, good. You've managed to gather all the keys. Yes, that's right. I have everything. What should I start with? Place the Clement III cross on the console. Then you have to put the nails on the disc of the door. What theme did you start with? As the fresco shows the birth of Christ, I placed one nail in Bethlehem, one in chapter two, and one in verse six. The iris opened a little. I thought it was normal. Behind the aperture of the iris, there is a duct in which I put my hand. I felt something like a valve at the bottom. I thought by turning it the door would open, or the iris would open completely, or something else would happen. Instead, I felt something like an axe cut off my hand. I really thought it was the end of me. What did you do then? Well, although I had made some unfortunate choices, I was lucky in that Mortimer was well stocked with drugs. I raided his supplies of medicine. What hole should I put the nails in? Well, I can't really advise you there, because I haven't exactly made the best choices myself. All I can say is that you have to insert one to choose a town, one to choose a chapter, and one to choose a verse. Those are Roman numerals on the disc. All right, my turn now. Go ahead, impress me. I'll shut up and let you concentrate. This exegesis contains comments from Judas on the different Gospels. It only contains certain chapters and verses, and the chapters are indicated by Roman numerals. The lexicon refers to different chapters and verses from the exegesis of Judas. The cycle of the moons has nothing to do with what I'm doing right now. Great, honey. Hmm, it looks like there are three types of inscriptions. Clearly, we have names of towns, Arabian numerals, and Roman numerals. These towns have one thing in common. They're all related to the life and death of Jesus. For example, Jordan is the place of the baptism of Christ. There, there are three styles of writing, and I've got three nails. There must be a link. I must surely put in one nail per category. The fresco clearly shows the birth of Christ. Louis, I can assure you that that is not the solution to this enigma. This fresco's only purpose is to mislead. I know that now. Please, focus on another theme about Christ. We'll have to trust her. You can see that the paint has come off in parts. Difficult to see what was there, but 
I can distinguish the letters N, R, I. Nothing more. Why, of course. I, N, R, I. Jesus Nazarenus Rex Yodorum. These initials stand for Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews. This is the inscription which appears on the cross at the crucifixion of Jesus. If Mortimer deliberately set a trap by showing the birth of Christ, then maybe the solution is the contrary. The death of Christ in that case? Yes, it's definitely a representation of the birth of Christ, but some of the details have flaked away. I can't see any other clues. One thing is for sure, this enigma deals with the life of Jesus, like my mother said. It works. Well done, Louis. I hadn't seen those other wheels. Try connecting the theme to see if it goes all the way. There must surely be a connection between the wheels. This wheel contains several symbols made up of one or two figures and one letter. The highest figure does not exceed 31, and each letter corresponds to a month of the year, A for April and M for March. I think these symbols must represent a specific date. Look at this. There are notches between each of the wheels. So I have to link the name of the town from the theme I've chosen to an icon, then to a date, and finally the date to the moon. This wheel represents the different moons. In the occult sciences, we represent the full moon by an X. As for the dark moon, called the new moon, in cults, it's, well, it's often associated with something harmful. The totally black moon corresponds to the new moon. So, going clockwise, we have the waning crescent, the last quarter, the waning gibbous, the full moon, the waxing gibbous, the first quarter, and lastly, the waxing crescent. I can feel the lever at the bottom. Good luck. I never doubted you, my son. 